Good morning, my brothers and sisters. We greet you with the joy of Jesus. And we welcome you to another worship experience with the Pilgrim Baptist Church of Newark, Delaware. Amen. We come and we ask that you will continue to pray for our sick and our shut-in. Continue to pray that God will allow, amen, more of our people to be vaccinated, amen, for the corona 19 virus. We come and we ask that you will not forget, but remember that the ushers program is going to be this afternoon at 3.30. Uh, as we come to you, we ask that you will be on Zoom, amen, that you might aid them in their worship experience. Well, brothers and sisters, this is another day that the Lord has made, and we ought to all be glad and ready to rejoice therein. There are other things coming up in weeks to come, and we ask that you not forget, amen, on Zoom, amen, our soul food program, our soul food luncheon program, which will be held the 27th, amen, of this month at 11 o'clock. So we ask that you would just keep in prayer those things that we are promoting, those things that are coming your way. And if you have not received the vaccine yet, uh, we need you to uh, contact us, amen, to sign up to see uh, where and when you can receive your shot. Thankful to God that we have between 42 and 43 people who were vaccinated this past Tuesday and Wednesday, amen, with their first shots. So keep us in prayer as we strive for the mastery of the kingdom. God bless you, amen, and we hope that you will enjoy the sermon to come. Coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, amen, verses 6 through 12, in the midst of it all, stand. God is looking for us not to quit, not to sit down, but to stand. Tell somebody just how good God has been. Come join us now as we enter into our program in all standing. By the riverside, study one no more. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Once again, we greet you with Jesus' joy. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Thy feet shall stand within thine gates, O Jerusalem. We welcome you once again to another worship experience with the Pilgrim Baptist Church of Newark, Delaware. We invite you to join us coming out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, if you will. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I will begin my reading at verse 6. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 for our message today. These words are penned coming out of the New King James Translation. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, 
but life in you. I, I want to stop there as we uh, deal with these 12, verses 6 through 12, excuse me, for our message today. Verses 6 through 12, coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I would like to speak to us this morning, coming from the thought, theme, or subject, in the midst of it all, stand. In the midst of it all, stand. Knowing that we are celebrating, amen, Black History Month, we come before you this morning realizing the struggle that we have had to endure during 2020. Brothers and sisters, and beyond 2020, prior to where we are now, we, a man, as children of God, have had to go through some troublesome times. We have gone through times of violence. We have gone through times of upset and being downtrodden. We have gone through times of being lied on and misused and accused falsely. We have been through times when we did not know which way to turn. Many of our people, many of our brothers and sisters who have toiled and labored for the Lord find themselves in the same struggle. Even now, because of the variant. Coming off of the coronavirus, we find ourselves now, amen, going through the time of vaccination. But yet and still, we are still holding on. In the midst of it all, let me encourage you to continue to stand. Stand on the promises of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Stand on the promises of of God. We find that there are those now in Texas, amen, snowed in without power, amen, haven't had power for the last four days. Many don't know what they're going to do. Getting water out of a speaker in the park when pipes are bursting and homes are being flooded during this time of sub-zero weather. But yet and still, God is still in control. And we are telling people to trust in the Lord. Amen. And he will see you through these ordeals. Amen. The weather, amen, is causing much snow and ice. Amen. In a manner that we have not seen it in his likeness. But yet and still, God is is still in control. So brothers and sisters, I have come to bear record this morning that what we need to do as the children of God is not become a man complacent, not be in despair because God is still moving in our human situation. Oh, I just come to bear record as we look at black history and where we have come from, how good God has been to us. Oh, down through the years, a man coming through, a man that of slavery coming through, that of the reconstruction coming through Jim Crow, a man, and coming to where we are now, a man, God has always been on our side. We've always trusted in the Lord. We've always looked to the hills from which cometh our help. Paul writes a man in this fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. He lets us know some things concerning that of the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is good news. Oh, brothers and sisters, things can be falling down all around you, but aren't you glad that you have the Word of God to lean on? 
I don't know about you, but uh, we can see that God is our present help, amen, in our time of need. God, amen, not only does, does, does he come and he takes care of us when we don't know which way to turn, but he is telling us, amen, to share with other people about his goodness. Oh, we are in troubled times. We are in times of despair. We are in times when people won't even look to God for their help. We are in times when we have non-believers and unbelievers and those who will not a man believe in the power of God. But the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen, does something for you and I. When we don't understand what's going on, it is the gospel that brings revelation to let us know that God is still in control. He enlightens our mind. There are three things that I want us to understand about the gospel. Not only is it teaching us, amen, the promises of God. Not only is it teaching us the do's and the don'ts. But when we receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, it enlightens our mind. In other words, we see things in a way we've never seen them before. When you was in the world, you could not, a man, see those things uh, that was coming. You could not understand those things uh, without spiritual enlightenment. But here he's talking about it enlightens the mind. Oh, brothers and sisters, a man, look at what he says. For God, in verse 6, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our heart. In other words, uh, the Spirit of God has entered into us upon uh, our acceptance of Jesus as his Son. And it has enlightened our minds. Our minds could not understand what God was doing when we were thinking with a carnal mind when we were in the world. We could not see the goodness of God but it enlightens our mind and the gospel convinces our conscience amen amen when we come to the knowledge of God our conscience amen the inner man within us can understand and know that we are not by ourselves Brothers and sisters, we have never been alone even when we thought nobody was on our side. When we were being mistreated, when we were not treated right, when we worked on jobs that didn't pay us fairly, when we looked around and neighbors was whispering, when we had certain things going on in our life, it was God who was still on our side. So not only will God, amen, enlighten the mind, he will bring us to spiritual understanding, the knowledge of God, knowing that the battle is not ours, but it belongs to the Lord, eases our situation. When we know that God is on our side and when we know now within our own minds that it was God that had made ways out of no way, our minds have been enlightened. Nobody has to tell you that there is a God when your mind has been enlightened. Not only your mind, but it convinces your conscience. Amen. Amen. That, 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 that God, amen, is worthy to be served. Not only that, the, 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 the consciousness of a convert is that of the soul. Amen. You can feel the guilt lifted up off of you when you come to the Lord 
uh, for yourself. Oh, can we see something here coming out of that? Not only does he enlighten us, but he places in us, amen, a spiritual fire. Look at what he says in the B portion of 6. He says, and to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Oh, brothers and sisters, amen, he gives us knowledge. God, amen, don't want you to serve him and don't know him. He don't want you to serve him and you haven't experienced him. Oh, so he lets uh, us know this morning, amen, in the midst of it all, you need to stand on the Lord's side. Don't ever give up on God, even though it looks bad. Everything that is bad is not bad for you. Sometimes these things must come in order that our minds, our consciousness, our faith might be enhanced. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you have been in the pit of despair. But look at what the Bible teaches us this morning. Amen. First of all, he enlightens our mind. Those of you who have been born again, those of you who may be going through uh, some emotional strain right now, turn it over to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, and uh, be convinced of the fact that God, amen, is the one that is changing uh, things in your life. Oh, amen. He comes to convert the soul. But look at here, y'all. Uh, he comes here to do some things uh, for us. Look at verse number seven. He says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What treasure? He's talking about, amen, the grace and mercy of God. He's talking about the Holy Spirit coming in to your lives. And when he talks about earthen vessels, he's talking about these mortal bodies, these bodies that have been cracked up and beat up and pushed down. Amen. These mortal bodies, amen, that can't hold enough without leaking sometime. But he has put the treasure of God in earthen vessels. No, we don't deserve it. Amen. Nobody deserves it. Look around and see if you deserve what you have. God has blessed you not because of, but God has blessed us in spite of. In spite of the fact, amen, that many of us grumble and mumble. In spite of the fact that we, amen, sometimes won't look back and see where the Lord has brought us from in spite of the fact that we won't forgive our brothers and our sisters God still maintains our lives during these times of trouble so brothers and sisters I don't know about you but I have not found anybody else that can do me like the Lord can we can see help in God when we have enlightened mind amen help from God when we've experienced him amen and not only that we have access to God because we can pray and ask God for our help and for our well-being can you see the help of God when you have prayed when you have even thought when God knows what you need even before you act and when you start crying out amen God will come to your rescue Paul wanted us to know the struggle of being saved he wanted us to know the struggle of being children of God not only the preacher but the members amen those who make up the body of Christ Paul is talking to us this morning even though we are struggling even though we have been complaining even though we have been inconsistent God is still trying to show us I put something 
in you. And I know that we are experiencing human weakness. We are tired of being shut in. We are tired of not being able to do things uh, on the norm. But what God is trying to show us, amen, during these times, and that is he is still in control. Those things that you, amen, uh, took for granted. God is saying, look at what you got to do now that you don't have the leisure. And can you stop now and give me some praise and give me some glory? Oh, brothers and sisters, what he has put in these earthen vessels is that of the Holy Spirit. And look at what he says. He says that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He wants us to take our minds uh, off of ourselves. He wants us not to think that the things uh, that are being accomplished that we are doing it, but that the goodness of God is permitting good things uh, to happen to his people. Oh, brothers and sisters, here we look at the power of God. And he is, he is asking us now, amen, uh, to put our trust and our faith in God. We need to depend on him. Doing this virus, amen, even though they've come up with a vaccine, the vaccine could not have been discovered without God's revelation. Oh, God has brought it about that he might take care of you and I during this time of the pandemic. So therefore, during this time, don't look to man. Don't put your trust in man. He is saying our dependence ought to be on God. To God be the glory. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. Tell me, brothers and sisters, where would we be? Oh, I come to bad record. The devil is busy. And he is trying to hinder our praise. He is trying to take away your joy. He is trying to kill your faith in the Lord. Oh, but if you've experienced the Lord, like the psalmist says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you've only tasted the goodness of God, if you've only been in the presence of God, if God has laid hands on your life, Oh, you can't do anything uh, but just hang in there and put your trust in him. So in, in the midst of all uh, that is going on, let me encourage you not to turn from the left. Don't go to the right, but you stay straight, amen, uh, on God. You stand and do all you can uh, to stand uh, on the word of God. Somebody, amen, uh, needs to hear your testimony. If you've been sick and God, amen, has raised you up, it's not of us, but it is of God. Oh, come on, Paul, and talk to us a while. Paul is telling us that through his struggles of being saved, through his struggles of doing the work of the master, he had run into a whole lot of trouble. Look at this. He says, but one thing I found out. In verse number 8, he says, uh, we are troubled uh, on every side, but yet, amen, not distressed. In other words, Paul realized that there were those who did not like the gospel. There were those uh, who did not want to see people saved, turn around, uh, forgiven, uh, amen, uh, and serving the Lord. Yeah, even those who are church folk who don't want to see the sinner on the corner come in because uh, they have talked about them all of this time. But God came uh, looking for the sinner. He came uh, looking for the lost. And Paul talks about his affliction in the ministry. Let me stop right there because we got people working in ministry that has forgotten, amen, that what you have and your capability of doing came from the Lord. You wouldn't be where you are now if it had not been for God promoting you and calling you to do what you're doing. Oh, brothers and sisters, he says here, you have trouble on every side, but yet 
not in despair. In other words, the trouble only empowered you. The trouble made you go down on your knees. The trouble made you go to the word. The trouble made you think about the promise of God. Knowing that he says, I'm on your side. Knowing that he says, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world age or time. I'm not distressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. So I'm, in other words, I'm not going to be distressed because of some of the sufferings that come with the ministry of the gospel. Paul recognized that there were those uh, who did not like him. There were those uh, who would not put up with his preaching uh, of the resurrected Christ. Amen. But I come to bear record. Oh, he is uh, resurrected. He does uh, live. And Paul says, uh, not only are we not distressed, he said, but we are perplexed, but not in despair. Now, when he talks about being perplexed, he's talking about being uncertain, amen, and sometimes in doubt, knowing that God is able to support us amen we doubt sometimes there's not a Christian that has not been in a situation where you doubt it God are you really there when we look amen back over 2020 when we look back amen over those things that have taken place uh, we have now those who have fallen to the hands of the police we have innocent people people who have been killed amen and destroyed families tore all up we have the 27 year old Rashad Brooks a man killed in Atlanta we turn around and have Daniel Prude 41 killed in Rochester New York I'm talking about innocent folk George Floyd 46 years old in Minnesota. We come back with Brianna Taylor in Kentucky. Oh, these people, amen, were cut down innocently, amen. And with Brianna Taylor, they even busted into her house, hadn't done a thing, and was shot eight times. Oh, I come to bad record. Stephon Clark in California. 22 year old a man Philando Castile 32 a man cut down in the midst of his life oh but I come to bad record we as a people marched a man when George Floyd met his death enough is enough and they started a man coming in the name of the Lord churches started rising up amen and we say is that lives matter black lives matter I come to bad record brothers and sisters Freddie Gray in Maryland a man died at the hands of the police Eric Garner 43 years old died a man at the hands of the police so I come to let you know that not only that but we soon uh, had to go through uh, the agony of voting. Look at what has been taking place. But yet we are not distressed. Eh? Amen. And we are not perplexed. Sometimes uh, we look around like ASAP and say, Lord, am I saved uh, for nothing? Where are you? And why are you allowing these things to take place? Amen. Well, I can tell you, amen, that there is a, a penalty for sin. There are those in this world who are now looking for help. They are looking for the Lord. They are turning back to the church. The church has always been our solace. Coming through a man times gone by. Standing on grandma and grandpa's shoulders. Standing on my dad's and mother's shoulders. Amen. We've come a mighty long way. And the devil Devil is still trying to, to tear us down. But look at what he said. He said we are perplexed. We sometimes are uncertain. We sometimes doubt God. But we are not. Amen. In despair. Oh, I come to bad record, brothers and sisters. We are not despairing because we are still praying. We are still asking God, amen, for his help. Brothers and sisters, I come to let you know this 
is the time for the church to wake up like they did after amen the emancipation proclamation they started praising God amen because they had the freedom now to praise God they had a vision to build churches where they can go in and have their own service they come to bear record now that God was moving even when they didn't have much money they took what they had and God amen multiplied it they built churches in order that they might go in look out now pilgrim amen there are churches that turned into schools and universities amen because they started to be educated there we are perplexed but we are not in despair I come to bad record I was suffering amen only gives us a greater testimony those of you uh, who have been in emotionally a man disturbed that means that you have not turned it over into the Lord's hand stop worrying and know that God is able to do whatever he needs to do during this time of black history it takes me back Amen to the black church that's been on this weekend. I can remember as a young boy how they used to praise God. Not just women, but men dancing for the Lord, showing our heritage, knowing that we came with spirit and we came with zeal. But they had something to praise God for working their land amen and yielding their crops God took care so therefore we were not in despair some may not understand and when we don't understand we just gotta trust him at what he's doing so Paul is saying here even though I've gone through these things myself we as Christians will find ourselves if we don't keep our minds on the Lord falling in depression falling in despair oh far letting things overcome us amen but when we can give it to almighty God the gospel of grace and mercy comes into our lives when we're in trouble it causes us to make a joyful noise it causes us to start singing praises unto God and what he's saying here brothers and sisters when we are persecuted a man but not forsaken even though the enemy may rise but we serve a God uh, that we can rejoice in and when persecution comes uh, and people uh, are working against us uh, you got to remember uh, that we serve a God uh, who will flip the script uh, I don't know about you uh, and I don't know uh, who I'm talking to this morning uh, but God told me to tell you uh, you you are persecuted for God's sake. You are persecuted there for Jesus' sake. If Jesus was persecuted for your sake, how come you get all upset when somebody rises up against you? But he says here, but not forsaken. God has not left us alone. God has not forgotten us. But we come to let you know we serve a God who is able to do all things. Can I get a witness? We got to have courage and perseverance to stand in these times. We got to have perseverance and do like many others have done. For God I'll live and for God I'll die. I don't know about you, but aren't you glad that during the pandemic, God took care of us. During the pandemic for almost a year, we've been praising him over the airways. 
though uh, many uh, want to come back in God is saying uh, praise me wherever you are the time has come when you don't have to come into the sanctuary you ought to praise me wherever you are somebody listening somebody is, is praying Somebody's been looking huh, for what you've been praying for. Huh? But the Bible says huh, all we got to do uh, is stand huh, on the Word of God. Huh? Why can I stand? Huh? I can stand because God huh, has given me power. Huh? He gave me huh, the Holy Ghost. Huh? He gave me uh, something that the world uh, can't take away. He gave me uh, my health and strength. Uh, he gave me uh, a means uh, to stand up and tell a dying world uh, that Jesus, uh, the living Christ, uh, is still alive uh, and he is well. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, ain't the Lord uh, Somebody ought to know uh, that God uh, is so good uh, that he won't uh, let us fall. Uh, in verse number 10, uh, he says, Always uh, bearing about uh, in the body the dying uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the life uh, of Jesus Christ uh, might be manifest uh, in our body. Uh, somebody uh, is looking at your life. Uh, Somebody is watching your praise. Somebody is listening to your voice. When was the last time you rose up during the pandemic and just said, thank you, Lord, for keeping me? Can you say, thank you, Lord, for keeping me? Can you say, thank you, Lord, for keeping me? For he sent his only son that died on an old rugged cross, persecuted for your sake and mine, beaten and bruised for your sin, hung on an old rugged cross, just to pay a debt we couldn't pay. So I stopped by just to let you know that we serve a mighty God. We serve a good God. Can I get a witness? He's all right. Every now and then, when I look back over my life, I can see the steps of the Lord operating in my life. But when I got to know him for myself, I couldn't sit still. I had to praise his name. Ain't the Lord all right? Can I get a witness, pilgrim? Can you praise him with me this evening? I know he's all right because he paid my price. I know I've been born again, washed in the blood of the sanctified lamb. I've been called to preach his word. And I stopped by to tell you, somebody ought to praise him with me this morning. Somebody ought to praise him in your midnight hour. Somebody ought to praise him when things are going bad. Somebody ought to praise him when you're sick and down. Praise the Lord while you have a chance. He died for your sins. He was buried for your sins. But early on Sunday morning, early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And he all right. He died. He hung his head and died. They laid him in a bar of grave. But early, early on Sunday morning, he got up. Didn't he get up with all power in his hand? Saving power, healing power. Amen. Can you say, yeah? Hallelujah. in the midst of it all stand <clears throat> I don't know who I'm talking to but God is saying don't you give up he needs you to hold on out of all that may be befalling you every day you wake up 
is another day of thanksgiving. Oh, we got something to thank him for. He has brought us here a mighty long way. Somebody still don't understand it. Somebody will say, Lord, if I praise you, why am I in the situation I'm in? Oh, but I come to tell you, he hasn't left you, but he's given you something to praise him for. Not because of your doing, but because of his doing. Because he's getting ready to perform a mighty work in your life. If you hadn't been through nothing, you can't tell somebody anything. Oh, but when God has brought you through, oh, you got a testimony. Ain't he all right? You got a testimony that you can praise him. You got a testimony that your loved ones are doing well. You got a testimony that you didn't have before the pandemic. Oh, but when this is over and you come through it, and God has blessed your life, your home, your family. Oh, you're going to have something to tell. So brothers and sisters, I want you to know that an enlightened mind, a convinced conscience, who will convert souls. The gospel will do those things, but the gospel will heal your heart. All you have to do is just trust in him and know that we can see our help in God. These three things, see our help in God. In other words, when things are going well, when things are being made manifest, seen, brought into your existence. It's nobody but God. And then you have access to him. You can go to God and pray yourselves. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. And if there's one this morning that don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, I challenge you to get him before it's too late. I ask that you will come on the Lord's side. And if you want to be converted, if you want salvation, then I ask you to repeat after me. Father, I ask you into my life. I know that I am a sinner, but I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe he died for my sins. I ask now you to enter in, mold and shape me into what you would have me to be. And I will give you glory, give you honor, and give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Bible says that if you, with a clear conscience and a clear desire, you are now saved. You are now a child of God if you've taken this step. And we welcome you to God's family. Let us prepare now as we bow and go to God. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this time that you've allotted for us to preach your word, knowing that we are in the midst of trouble. But even in the midst, give them the spirit to stand on your promises. You will take care of us. You will heal us. You will protect us. You will cover us. You will deliver us. And you will keep us. I ask this now, that you would bless all of our sick and afflicted, those who are shut in, caregivers, frontline workers, our governmental officials, President Biden and President, Vice President Harris, we lift them up to you now. All who stand 
in the need of your power, in the need of your mercy, we ask now that you cover and that you will bring revelation to who you are. This is a servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the risen Christ, rest, rule, and abide with each of you now and forever, evermore. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. And remember, Pastor Rector loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a very blessed day. <laughs> When you've done all you can and it seems like it's never enough And what do you say when your orphans turn away and you're all alone, alone Tell me what do you give when you give in Stand, watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how. And when there's nothing left to do, you just stand. One as the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand and be sure you're not entangled in that bondage.
just 